Hey guys, so today I'm going to do a review and a rant about this CNC machine. Um, it's one of the more popular CNC machines that you can buy on eBay. It's a, they believe they call it a 6040 CNC. Uh, it's made from China. Um, you know, you might be able to get an import directly into the U.S. Uh, or, I mean, an importer from the U.S. Uh, to have it shipped to you so you don't have to wait on ship time, but they're all still from China. Um, and there's some things that you could really tell uh, when it comes to working on it. Now, when I first ordered this machine, it had come in two different crates. The first crate arrived in like two weeks, and when I opened it up, it was half of a machine. So we called up the seller, and they said that the second crate should still be in delivery. So when we finally got that and started to piece everything together, we realized that this was a used machine uh, because some of the parts were taken out uh, of the box and put together and then haphazardly threw back in like someone had built the machine, figured out that they didn't like it, and sent it back. And then just didn't bother to take it, you know, strip it completely down. So when I first got it, I had to repair the machine. Now, I had never worked on a CNC machine or a 3D printer before, so it was a bit of a challenge, but we managed to get it up and going about a month later. Um, now, if, if you're looking to buy this machine, there are some things that you should know, especially if you get things like the extras, such as this fourth axis, this uh, lathe. Um, whenever you get this, it does not include proper instructions on how to set this up. Um, you know, you have to go through and set up in Mach 3 the, the stepper motor and the gearing ratio. Um, the book attempts to tell you this, but because whoever wrote this manual here, I'm guessing used Google Translate or something, and it doesn't really translate well. Um, so you will have to use trial and error to get this thing up and going. I have yet to actually get really good cuts on it. I don't know if it's my timing or my, you know, my stepper motor settings or what I'm doing. And another thing is, is when you go to put this on the table, you got to put it, oh, I just disconnected the wire, but you got to put it on the table like this. And then you got to try to straighten it. And then you put in your end stop over here. The other end. And then you can mill your piece out. The problem therein lies is that, well, there's several problems. We'll go over them all, but it is extraordinarily hard to get this lined up and straight. So whenever your, uh, your blade is coming through and cutting, if this is angled at all, it's going to make your piece all messed up. Now another thing to note is that this has no limit switches, which means that it cannot auto home or home itself out. Which means that anytime you put a piece up here, such as a piece of wood or something to work with, um, you have to home it out every time. You have to set the machine home and then you have to set your project home. That is not a bad thing necessarily if you're doing just a one-off shot um, or you don't plan on turning the machine off. Um, but it becomes a huge problem when you start to try to actually mass produce anything because inevitably the machine is going to turn off. And if you have a jig set up here to where you could just drop in pieces, have it run around and cut, pull the pieces out, drop in new pieces, have it run around and cut. The problem lies in that if the machine gets shut off, you got to rehome everything, then you got to shift the, the uh, die that you made wherever to make sure everything is lined back up and run through several test cuts. If you have limit switches, you could just tell it to go home, find it, be done. Um, I have limit switches from my 3D printer here. Uh, just a lot of extra ones. I bought extras in case those broke, but I'm going to install them on here, uh, maybe, in the hopes that I can start limit or homing this thing out on its own. Now, see, that presents another challenge because you have the control box down here where everything would plug into. Let's see. I'm pretty sure I still have the screws off. Let's see if I can get in here. Okay. So to take a look inside the control box, you'll have a power supply, 24 volt. Uh, if you buy it from, well, most of the ones that I saw on eBay still used a 220 power supply. So if you uh, aren't in a place where you can get 220, you will have to get one of these where it steps up the 110 to 220. 
Um, we had a 220 nearby, but it just kept blowing fuses, so we ended up having to get one of these. Uh, you got your four motor controllers for the four X's, X, Y, and Z, and then A for the uh, lathe. These are actually decent motor controllers. I was surprised to see these in here. Um, if all else fails, I'm keeping these motor controllers. Then you have this. This is the control board, if it'll focus. As you can tell, most of it's written in Chinese. So it's a matter of just trying to figure out what goes where. Now, this is the board um, that also runs the spindle. Uh, the, it's got a 800 watt spindle on it. And as you can see, the board is not even rated for 800 watts. There's, there's an issue number one. Now, you're supposed to be able to plug limit switches in on this, but I have yet to actually be able to figure out where. That's, and that brings me back to the issue from before, why I haven't done it yet. Um, I want to switch this out because another big issue is that connector. It's a parallel port connector. Uh, I had to go out and buy a card for this computer because I didn't have any spare computers that had a parallel port. I, those got scrapped out for gold long ago. This is just an old XP machine that I had. Um, you know, nothing special. I think it's an Athlon dual core. Got a wireless card. Um, and the reason why the side and everything is off is because the water cooling for the spindle, I'm actually using an old PC water cooling setup that I had laying around. Uh, an old uh, water pump, reservoir, and radiator here. Um, I don't have any fans on the radiator because it really doesn't need it. After going through this reservoir, this reservoir is like a giant heat sink. Um, after going through here and here, the water is sufficiently cool enough by the time it gets up to the spindle here to keep it cool. Um, even after the spindle is running for an hour, two hours, uh, the water is, st like the tubes, are not even warm to the touch. So it's doing a pretty good job. Now there's another problem there. That's if you can keep it running for an hour or two. I often have times where I go to power this thing up and I'm running it for maybe 10, 15 minutes and it shuts off and errors out. I get an error screen right across here. And it's because that board, this board right here, overheats and it just shuts the machine down. So if you've got a piece of aluminum that you poured and are looking to mill it out, you've just ruined your piece. Because, once again, it has no limit switches, so if the machine shuts off, you can't home out to the exact same place every time. Here, I also want to show you some of the stuff that you would encounter in this manual. Let's see. Actually, oh, and I'll get into the software here in a second. It's got screenshots of the Mach 3 program and everything, and that's what this machine uses. Um, but there's issues with the software as well. Might as well, in fact, say it now while I'm looking for something. Every bit of the software that comes with this, it'll come with Mach 3, it'll come with, I think, ArtCam Studio, uh, which is, you know, converts models into G-code or pictures into G-code. Uh, it's all pirated. You'll get a burnt disk, and, and this book here has steps on how to pirate the software. It, it's... If I would have known about the software, because the software, getting the software was one part I thought I was going to be getting a good deal at. I should have known that it would come with cracks on the CD for all the software, and the cracks don't even hardly work. Uh, I in, ended up chucking them, and now I'm going with some open source solutions, uh, but just don't count on any of the software here that comes with this to actually work. But take a look at this. Um, acrylic cutting processing. Recommend to use single blade spiral milling cutter. Characteristic is processing speed quickly, High emergency, not glue the crumbs. The special manufacturer process ensure processing acrylic, not cracking off. Knife is very fine. Surface is clean and smooth. If you want the machine surface to achieve grind, I'm guessing that's maybe erroneous. Whatever that is, effect, recommend to use double blade or three blade spiral milling cutters. Yeah, and this is how the entire book is written. It's 
it is like that through and through while it's trying to explain to you how to pirate the programs. Uh, the, the instructions are all like that. Now, the problem comes in that all of the numbers that also come with it to set up the stepper motors and everything else in Mach 3 are all wrong. Every last setting that you have to actually set is wrong. Uh, I, I'll do another video, um, maybe, on how to set this machine up if you do happen to purchase one of these. Now, don't get me wrong. This machine will get good and accurate cuts once you can actually get it set up. It is fairly accurate. It does its job. Um, as long as it doesn't shut off on you, it will make some really nice artwork for you. The problem is, is all of the labor and pain and setup that goes into it using the pirated software, you know, using a subpar control system and no limit switches. It, you don't have things like auto adjust for tool height. It does come with a, a tool height finder, but I have yet to actually use it. Um, I have not actually had a desire to really get into there and try to use it. Um, but it does come with that if you decide to purchase that. Uh, just know that if you do get a machine like this, one of these eBay's 6040 CNC's, that it's going to take an immense amount of work to get it up and going. Um, and let me let me give you a view of the of how it works real quick, just so if you are looking to buy it, maybe answer some questions. Um, you'll find that it runs off of a, let me see if I can get the camera in here, off of a lead screw right up in there. And it gives you your Z axis. Now obviously you've got a minimal Z height, but you know if you're doing flat pieces of wood or aluminum sheeting or something like that, that's not an issue. Uh, then you got two rails on the side that these bearings run on with a single screw underneath and you'll see the nut right there. Um, you definitely want to lube all of these lead, lead screws up. Uh, they will start to rust on you. As I'm out here in a garage and it everything rusts. I mean, look at, look at that. And then you got a, a lead screw with bearings. I can't really take this off. It's screwed in, but just trust me. You've got a lead screw right here in the middle with two rail bearings on the top and bottom. Uh, everything is done through, or all the cables are ran through these snakes. Let's see. It goes all the way around, and it comes out the side. It goes underneath, which this is horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. I wish it went underneath. I'm going to have to do something about this at some point. Um, and once it comes out underneath, you'll see that snake under there right there. And then it comes out the back in which, you know, it drops down with the water cooling and power and everything else. Uh, it's a pretty simple machine. And once you get the hang of it, it is easy to work on and easy to cut with. It's just a big pain getting everything set up. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, start it up for you real quick. I'm not going to turn on the computer and everything uh, and get the water cooling system done because I've got some air bubbles in the water cooling and I need to go ahead and get those out before uh, I try to run it through my pump. Uh, this is an expensive pump and I don't really want to ruin it that way. So, uh, But I will turn on the spindle so you can at least see how it turns on and, and what the screen looks like and everything else. Uh, turn on the power to the transformer. I'll turn it on here. And then it's going to stay there. It's going to blink until you hit the green button. Now that's now I, I don't understand what this screen is for because that spindle is rated to 20,000 RPM. Um, this reading only goes up to like 4,000. Uh, so I'm not entirely sure what number that's supposed to signify, but it, I guess it gives you a range between 1 and 4,000 of the minimum and max speed of the spindle. Let you see inside while it's turned on. And then to actually power up the spindle, it's not, it doesn't run through the parallel port, the power for the spindle, like the stepper motors do. Um, you've actually got to turn it up from here. And you'll see a spin up. Yeah, I bet you can't really see it spinning, really. But you see, or it goes up to 400 
point zero, not four thousand. And you got an emergency button here that does not work, so don't rely on that emergency button. Uh, I've tried it twice, and both times it doesn't stop anything. Doesn't doesn't work. Uh, so if something happens, reach for the power switch, not the emergency button. Um, you'll see also uh, one thing to do to make these more accurate. If you no matter what CNC machine you actually ultimately end up getting, if you got to put it on a table. You want to make sure you've got the heaviest table possible, the heaviest and beefiest table, because this thing's going to want to rock. As long as you have a really heavy table, that inertia of it standing still will fight against the rocking of this machine. As you can see, I've got a uh, pool slate, well, part of a pool table slate here as my tabletop. And then I've got big old 4 by 4s for the legs. And that that does really good in preventing this from shaking. It still shakes a little bit, but... Uh, not nearly as much as I was anticipating. That stone is heavy enough to, to keep everything weighed down. Um, I would have to say that's about it. Uh, if you have any questions about it, I mean, I've, I've had this machine for like two years now. I've done all kinds of stuff on it. Uh, I think we paid 2000 2100 somewhere around in there. Uh, I do not think it was worth it. Next time, uh, I will be building my own. But if you're just getting into CNC machining, or if you don't really feel like building one, uh, but don't mind fixing one right out of the box, then this might end up being a good good sale for you. Um, I mean, it's good for cutting wood, cutting aluminum, very slowly cutting copper. I wouldn't attempt to cut steel. You need a, a bit beefier spindle there for that. Um, but it, it'll, I mean, if you're just doing little projects here and there, it'll be good for that. Uh, but I wouldn't try to do any sort of mass production or anything like that. Not with this machine. You would want to invest a little bit of extra money and make sure that you've got some of the basics on the machine that this is lacking.